All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for this webinar, the deeper dive into end of life soul care uh, and art therapy that CHPCA is hosting in honor of National Hospice Palliative Care Week. We hope everyone's having a lovely Hospice Palliative Care Week and enjoying uh, celebrating the theme of living in color and the amazing work that hospice palliative care teams uh, do every day across the country. Uh, we want to start by acknowledging that our team at CHPCA works on unceded, um, the unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. Uh, and since we have folks joining from across this land we call Canada, we encourage everyone to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional keepers of the land that you are on personally. I want to welcome our amazing speaker, Louise Lamott and thank her for joining us today. Louise is a retired palliative care nurse who practiced for over 35 years. After enjoying retirement for five years, she obtained her expressive art therapy uh, certificate and is now pursuing a two-year diploma in indigenized art therapy at the Wheat Institute. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping before we all get started. The webinar will be recorded and you will receive a copy, a, a link to the recording. Uh, please ask your questions in the chat box. We will, uh, we will compile the questions and we'll reserve them for the question period at the end. We'll do our best to address as many as we can during that question period. Uh, there will be an experiential uh, activity, so make sure that you have uh, a piece of paper and some supplies, either some crayons, coloring pencils, something that you can uh, uh, draw with with a bit of color. And uh, with all of that, Housekeeping covered, I will turn it over to Louise uh, and you can go ahead and take it away. Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me here and sharing space with me and, uh, and speaking about my own experiences with, uh, with palliative care, uh, hospice care, and uh, now with art therapy. Uh, to introduce myself first in my in my uh, my my own traditional language, Penisuak Nagao and Chiki Unisinagasin. Uteni knows Chi Penisuak and Inuak Nagaki now Niwahumagana. I am uh, Swampy Cree from Territory 5 in northern Manitoba, but I am now a guest on the uh, unceded territories of the Mi'kmaq. Uh, specifically, I live in. Uh, on, in Stratford and Prince Edward Island. Um, I'm, I've been there for 14 years. Uh, so I, uh, and to qualify um, also in this, in this space, uh, first of all, I would like to, uh, to say that uh, anything that I do share uh, and speak to is uh, specifically my own uh, uh, experience, my own thoughts, and my own um, my own uh, way of being on this land, um, and that uh, I'm referring to the training that I'm taking in the art therapy program right now. Um, so I'll begin with the qualifying. Uh, I graduated from nursing in 1986. Uh, in uh, Ontario, and that's where I began my palliative care nursing uh, in 92, uh, because in 86, I, I went overseas for, for six years and came back and started there. Uh, when I started palliative care nursing, um, it was during the time, the early, early to mid 90s, that uh, palliative care made a very strong uh, step into the uh, into the care process of uh, um, clients that were and patients that were uh, beginning their uh, beginning the end of life uh, stage, and uh, at that time uh, the government put in uh, uh, very great plans of, uh, of we were doing twenty four hour uh, seven day a week nursing care. Um, and uh, we were we were uh, doing all the right from case management, uh, setting up the homes, working with the families, and uh, uh, that was a, a very wonderful uh, space to be in. And I I did that work in in uh, Ottawa in Ontario. Um, 
I also was the director of nursing at a palliative home, a 70 bed palliative home. I uh, did that for four years uh, and then began to move around, uh, but always stuck with, uh, with palliative nursing. Uh, now I'm uh, in, uh, palliative care was, uh, was, uh, was a passionate space for me. Um, it, I was meant to be a palliative care nurse. And uh, um, when I retired five years ago, when I turned 60, I retired. And uh, I, was, I did okay for a few years, but I knew that I wanted something more. So that's where I began my, my training into art therapy with the idea uh, in, two, in twofold. One was uh, because I had the, the palliative care background, that I knew art therapy would uh, would be a great uh, field to be in, that I could blend those two. But also in my elder years, uh, culturally speaking, um, I'm not an elder yet in in the in the way that our our people recognize elders. But I wanted to be as uh, as. Um, informed as possible and carry as much uh, healing and teaching uh, therapies as possible uh, when I get into that, into that, when I finally get into that space. Um, so I want to jump right in now to, uh, to uh, speaking about art therapy and, uh, and palliative care, uh, end of life. Uh, first of all, that's uh, uh, as an art, as a, as a, uh, blooming, getting ready to be an art therapist. Uh, end of life is, is a very, very uh, difficult, difficult phrase for me. It's, it's uh, um, with art therapy, we want to make every, everything we, as much as possible as we say and do, we wanna, we wanna have that in a healing, have healing energy to it. And somehow uh, death, dying, end of life, they just, for, for me anyways, they just don't carry that energy. Um, so I like to refer to it as, uh, as being uh, um, those, those honored ones, those uh, humbled ones that uh, get to share that space with those that are there ready to, to uh, go, be in transition to, uh, to another plane of being. But in my culture, it's, uh, we call it going ahead. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I feel it's a, it's a more gentle way. And uh, yeah, so when you hear me speaking like that, it's, you, you'll hear some of my cultural uh, background coming into it and my art therapy. Uh, so let's begin now with, uh, with, um, uh, I want to try and, and, uh, and bring a parallel into this space uh, and just doing this, what we're doing now, uh, gives me the idea of a parallel. Um, uh, as I look, as I look here, uh, I'm sitting in a hotel room. Uh, I've been, I'm doing work here, and I'm, I'm preparing to, to do some, uh, some deep spiritual work for myself. So I'm in, I'm moving, uh, and I'm sitting here talking to a computer. Uh, I don't see anybody, uh, and I'm just having faith that well, somebody's there listening to me. So uh, uh, it it takes me into that space of uh, where we've been in this past this past uh, two years. Uh, you know, we as human beings were were put into a place of uh, of uh, of isolation of uh, of separation, of loss of freedom, uh, loss of uh, dignity, loss of a lot of hopelessness. Uh, we've all been there. So in that sense, I, I, I feel like we, we've all um, experienced some kind of uh, um, end of life uh, kind of space, um, and then when we when we when we bring that kind of uh, that kind of space, when we look at it, that's where we 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 can we can 
um, actually uh, see ourselves being in that being in that space of uh, of transition, of uh, of moving ahead, of uh, death, of dying, of end of life. Um, and when we go in to speak with our uh, with with those that we're we're taking care of, those ones that we're offering uh, we're offering our uh, our healing uh, healing uh, backgrounds, our healing gifts that we carry. Um, they are there when you when you think about it, when we forget about ourselves right in this space, uh, and just remember the parallel we've just gone through with COVID nineteen. That will that can give us an idea, uh, a sense of it. Uh, absolutely not a complete uh, feeling, but a sense of of some of those experience that our uh, our our client, our patient. Th those that we're uh, that we're uh, we're uh, uh, sharing time with, um, there's that parallel there because they're now uh, it's possible some may be in that space of of uh, of loss of freedom. Uh, there's a big shift. There's shock. There's uh, there's isolation. There's uh, wanting to be alone. There's uh, there's chaotic kinds of emotions uh, uh, share, showing themselves. Everything from uh, you know the five stages of grief, moving through those stages. There's there's the uh, there's the the loneliness, the fear, the the shock, the the refusing to believe, the the bargaining that we we go through and and. And with anything that we that we're losing, uh, with any crisis or trauma, so we can see that that kind of uh, blending, uh, we can get a little glimpse maybe of uh, we can get a little glimpse of what our what our uh, harvest is uh, is experiencing. Harvest is a uh, harvest is in in our space of art therapy. Uh, like I said, we 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 change. Uh, we have very many uh, uh, wordsmiths in our in our uh, in our space of art therapy. So uh, we want things to to sound and feel and uh, give off this good energy. So we often say that uh, we're we're we are hardists, you know, like. Uh, and and the one we're helping is the hardest. They're going to be going and looking in for for healing and really and and we're offering the tools. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a wonderful space to be in, and uh, the the space of of uh, of of just um, being present being present when we go when we when we uh, when we begin working with uh, with uh, clients um, I think for for just for ease sake I'll, I'll just continue using clients uh, and that will refer to those that you are going to uh, going to go into work with uh, so one of the first steps I like to I like to think of uh, and I think it's quite important is is, I, I, I really believe that you're already doing art therapy. Uh, you may not be have that, that title of art therapist, but when we go into a caring space, when we go in and, and offer heart space, but what, cause what else can we offer when we go in to, to, a, to a person's uh, energy, energy space when, when they're, when they're making this transition, it's, it's, it's spiritual. It's it's heart to heart. Uh, so it's it's uh, there's art comes out of us. It comes out of us, and 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 just the way we present ourselves, just the way we walk into that space, uh, and and being mindful that the ones that are getting ready for transition uh, have, I believe, they have an extra special energy that they're they're hyper aware of things. So they will see, they can see very clearly if you're walking in with uh, a sense of, okay, I'm here for eight hours and, uh, 
uh, let's get this on the road and get moving versus walking in and uh, just presenting yourself with, uh, with a smile and slowly, gently uh, letting them know that, that you are there for them. It's, uh, it's a, uh, I believe that's art. It's an art to do that. Uh, especially in the world that we live in right now where, there, where there's so much going on and things are so fast uh, because you, you, you need to pull yourself into that space uh, to be ready to do that sacred work. Um, the, the first, the first uh, thing is, uh, is being aware. Um, if I'm going to do art with somebody, uh, with anybody, I have to prepare myself. Um, so there are many things that I, I will try to do. I may not be able to do all of them, but I will try. I'll give, it, I'll give that a good, good effort on my part. And, and what I'm talking about is, um, is gathering, gathering the, the information gathering the information that we need. Uh, we, I believe it's a, it's a, it's a great responsibility uh, to be able to uh, help yourself to do the, the artwork that you want to do with, uh, with, your, with your client. So as we know, and, and I'm sure you all do this already, the gathering of the information of, of everybody involved, of, of your client, of the family, of the support system, of the environment, you know, is COVID-19 still going on versus another, another uh, uh, situation? All those things uh, as we go in and prepare uh, to, to relate to, to, our, to our client. And that, that I believe is the first step. It's the first step of, uh, of being well prepared going in, um, getting as much information as possible. And then when I prepare myself, uh, once I've done that and I've, I've done as much as I can, uh, then I prepare my, my tools that I will be taking in with me. Uh, my, my, uh, art, art, uh, my art tools. Um, and based on, based on what uh, I, have, I have, the information that I've received inside of that uh, investigation or, or uncovering of all, what I can get to help the client. Um, what was the diagnosis? What's the prognosis? Uh, the family, how many in the family? Who's all there? Who lives there? All those things. Then I can, I can uh, make some, some good decisions on what kind of art I'm going to do when I go there. Um, so it's... it's, it's um, the best way for me to explain is to give you some examples. Um, so um, let me just let me just pull myself together here and refocus. I want to I want to gather my tools after I've gathered all the information in relation to who I'm going to be seeing. Um, so the tools that I'm going to work with. Uh, in our therapy have, have many different ways of affecting, uh, affecting the, the recipient of, of, uh, of that care. Uh, it, 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 isn't, uh, it isn't just about taking, taking uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some crayons and doing some work. It's because those crayons actually uh, deliver a specific response to some in relation to say crayons versus acrylic paint. It can evoke different kinds of reactions and responses in, uh, in your client. So it's knowing about that too. So once I know if I'm working with, if I'm going in to share space with someone that's having a very difficult time is still maybe in the, um, in the uh, denial phase, the denial uh, space of, of, of their diagnosis, then I will go through my art and, and, uh, and my practices and find what might be a good fit. Uh, but if I'm, if I'm going to be sharing space with somebody that's uh, just in a, in a wonderful space 
and as calm and peaceful, then I can go in another direction. Uh, and these are all, uh, this is what we were, we're, were taught in, in the art therapy program. Um, and the first thing I'd like to say about, about uh, doing that work is, uh, is the experience is the best way for you to, to be able to offer a, um, um, a practice or even offer a gentle uh, space of being using art is to experience it yourself first. Look at some of what I'm going to what I'm going to share with you today as an experiential, and you'll be able to get a sense of how that made you feel, and that's the kind of uh, information that you can you can take in with you when you go and uh, share share uh, space with someone. It's it's imp so important to experience it first. Down to that is uh, is being very careful. Uh, uh, because we do, you, you, it is, what can happen is you can open up, uh, you can open up someone to a space that maybe they're not ready for yet. And that's another part of our therapy is, is assessing whether uh, somebody is, is possibly ready uh, to go into that space. And more so even, I believe, with palliative care, because if I, if I look back on my own experience with palliative care, when I arrived at a, at, 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 a, at a client's home, I left my stuff at the door. And this I remember in the early 90s, they told us you leave all your own personal opinions, thoughts at the door and you walk in and you let, you let your client lead you. That, that, that person will show you where they, where they need to be. So this is very important also. Uh, is is letting them lead you into that space and being able to assess that space. Um, so it's not something that you can just take a take a practice. Uh, we call practices are what we we use at different different times and and it's an experiential. So you can't just take a practice and oh I heard about this and go in there and and do that with somebody uh, because it can you can cause uh, you can cause some uh, some harm there. So. Uh, uh, in your own space of being as ethical as possible, it's important for you to know that. Um, but there are other things that you can do uh, that are very, very gentle. And I'll, I'll quickly give you a, a list of, of what uh, I've experienced that has been uh, very gentle that you can also try on yourself. Um, so yeah, uh, that, that, was, uh, that was an important part for me. Um, Okay, I think I've I've done that. So creating that safe space to 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 do art therapy. Um, number one is uh, is as an art therapist when we come into into uh, sharing space with a client, uh, it's it's usually by a referral. Uh, it can be uh, uh, through uh, a fam a friend contact. Uh, that is has asked us to do some some private care. It's through different agencies, so we get all that information. But then, all right there is that space that's important. That that there's a there's a uh, a referral that's made. There's both of you know that okay, this this is a space that's coming, and the the client has the opportunity to uh, to decide if that's something they want to do again going back to they will lead us they will lead us in where they want to go um, but if the client is not ready we can still go into that place that same space and maybe uh, begin sharing with the family members um, we can find that and and that could be a gentler way for for the client to see oh this is what what art therapy is because very often um, um, and I've experienced it myself, is you'll get an appointment for art therapy and, and they may think they're coming there to do art, to learn how to do art or to do some craft work. Um, so uh, art therapy is, is absolutely not uh, uh, craft work. It's not uh, coming to learn about art, but you can do both of those things in art therapy. Um, so the, the, 
in in art therapy, if if you were going to be a uh, uh, seeing me for art therapy, uh, that's how we would start. We would get together and we be, we would begin talking about what is art therapy, what it isn't. Uh, we would talk about different things that we could use uh, to do art therapy. We would talk about uh, uh, you know how they feel about that, um, and we would share about what art therapy is, and then we would make a plan uh, to meet. And uh, that's where, while I'm doing, while we're doing that sharing, there's a lot of assessment going on. There's a lot of uh, information gathering going on. And that would give me an idea of where, where uh, it's possible that we could begin. Uh, and, and I would make those offerings. Uh, to you as a as a uh, as a harvest, so uh, it's the same with uh, with palliative care. Um, I would want uh, someone uh, to approach the the client and let them know that this is an option. This is an option to to um, receive and and work with uh, with uh, another kind of therapy. Uh, and, and to speak to them, you know, is, is this something that might be interesting for you? Um, that's, that's where it would begin. And then I'd have the initial meeting and then we would begin to make some plans. So always ensuring that that safe is, that place is very, very safe and uh, that they're in charge. They can let me know when to move back and when, yes, I'd like to do this, that or the other. Uh, so some of the things that uh, I'm looking at my time here, I got 27 minutes. Um, so some of the things I'd like to share with you some of the things that are possible. Um, first of all, the things that I, uh, I would do uh, in, in a hospice and, and, and palliative uh, space. Um, one of the things I always did, and you may already do that yourselves in palliative care, I always uh, had uh, two journals going uh, in in that in that space. Uh, one was for one was for me, um, and one was uh, for the family. And in the one that uh, that I worked with, um, I would I would write down things that were uh, uh, that were uh, specific. To, uh, to the client care. Exa an example would be, uh, you know, during maybe the patients start talking to visitors that were arriving that I couldn't see. Uh, so I would, I would write down names uh, or, or I would write down a phrase that seemed to be repeated. I would write down uh, how, the, how the, the client did that night. Uh, the, 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 the care that was being given, just so the family was aware, could get a clear picture of what was happening during the night. But what, and, and the, the, a lot of things happen at night. Uh, it seemed that's when they wanted to do their, their, uh, their private care. Uh, so I had a lot to write about. Um, but in the family uh, book, then they would leave me messages about because uh, I would I would mention um, you know so and so talked about Tom and the car ride uh, the car trip they went and the vacation they took and uh, you know just some some information around that and then they would tell me who Tom was so whenever my patient talked to me and because they often did they would say well you know this is this is so and so uh, Louise this is Tom. And I could get right into that space uh, as gently as possible and just join in there without seeing anybody, but knowing that I was supporting him in the space that him or her in the space that uh, they were in at that moment. So these two journals work very well for me. And then what I, what I, uh, I would do after uh, my, after the, 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 uh, my time there was done, I would leave those. Uh, and I've, I've, I have received uh, uh, affirmations of, uh, of how important those journals were for the families um, in, the later, in the later times. 
and what what they meant to them. So so there are some uh, good healing there, uh, long term healings that uh, that were beneficial. The other uh, things that spaces things that I I can do now is uh, I would begin with um, with doing. Uh, uh, different kinds of art that's very gentle. Uh, for example, uh, we do uh, uh, nature and, uh, and food uh, illustrations. Uh, illustrations are things that we can create with something just as an offering back to the land or to the birds or, or you know, something that we're giving away, we're offering a gift. And this is how we, I would present it to the, to the client. And this is something that, that can be very neutral. Um, it's, uh, for example, eating, just eating fruit. Say you, you yourself are eating fruit, uh, slicing up an orange in different ways, slicing up some grapes, slicing up some, uh, whatever fruit you have. And then I would talk about, you know, creating, let's create a space, let's create some food for the birds that are here, for the, let's feed the birds, but let's make them laugh, you know, and, and I would create maybe a face using grapes as big eyes and, and using the orange slices for a mouth and, and I would create something. And, uh, and that is something that can, can bring even a, a, a few minutes of relief from being in that space of, of, uh, of getting ready to leave. Uh, so that's one little practice that you could, that you could use. Another one is um, making a family tree. Uh, that could be a good one also. And what I do is just using a, a, a piece, a long piece of uh, craft paper, brown craft paper. And I would just draw a tree with, with, with uh, crayons or whatever. I would do the drawing because I'm, I'm, it's, it's more of a passive exercise because as soon as you start doing that crayon, it can, affect, it can bring reaction to your, pay, to your client. So I would draw the tree. And then we would begin, we would begin talking on what I would ask them, okay, which, you know, here's a branch for, for your parents and uh, your wife's parents. Let's put some names there. And we would, we would talk about that. We would put branches for, for the children uh, or, or not even having children of having fur babies, pets, um, acquaintances that we, we considered family. But even going into another space of what kind of tree is our family tree? What kind of, are we the great oak? Are we the, the, the shedding birch tree? Because nature and trees especially have a way of, of sharing information. If you look at trees, they can tell you a lot. And you, that, that's a good, um, uh, a nice gentle way to, uh, to have a discussion about family and bringing that in there. Uh, and depending on the time uh, that, you're, that you're there, uh, bringing a focus now maybe to the family and to the support system. Uh, another idea, uh, another practice can be um, uh, doing a, um, like a talent show. And, and it's, it's for the audience. And the audience is your client. And all the, 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 what we're trying to do is just let the client be. They don't have to react. They don't have to be anything. They don't have, because being in that space of, of, of death and dying, there's that space of, okay, I'm getting a visitor. Oh, I have to be, I have to be strong now, or I have to be, I don't even want to see anybody, but I have to be, I have to be, be something. So when we can take the attention off of your audience, the client, and the family is going to do an art show, a talent show, whatever they want, and honoring the audience, the client. So one may be a musician, maybe they can create a song or sing a song that was, that was important for their loved one. Another one can be a, a baker, Maybe they were the best cook, the best barbecue agent in town. So they would do this big display of cooking all this, 
these ribs or whatever and talking about what what those were about and you would know that you know the family will come up and and it's letting the family find their way and what do you want to say to your dad what is the message that you would like to to give to your dad to all that are, are so dysfunctional and we don't want to give uh, we don't want to offer that space uh, that that's for for back here your client doesn't need to be uh, to be uh, dealing with that at that time so it's important to know the family also uh, and to be clear about uh, what you know what they're going to be uh, presenting if that's an option that you want to do so I'm going to look at my little board here the uh, uh, things that you you may have already done are are uh, uh, letter writing, uh, third hand. Uh, there's a therapy. It's called third hand, and uh, that's for those that are just not able. They don't have the strength anymore. They don't have the the will anymore to do art. So third hand is me writing a little letter. Uh, it's me maybe doing collage art, cutting out pictures and showing, do you want to use this one? What kind of word can I find to put up here? And me doing the work. I'll be his third hand, his or her third hand. And that, that is something that's, uh, that's uh, very special also. Uh, and, and I didn't even know until uh, a while ago that uh, there was such a, you know, I think we've always done that. I just didn't know there was a name for it. Somebody, you know, somebody uh, uh, made made a name for that. But yeah, that's a that's a beautiful one. Also, the a creation story for those that um, uh, uh, there can be so many creation stories. There can be the birth creation story. Do they know the the? If you don't want to write it, it can be even just a one on one sharing, and it, that can be a lot of healing. If they know, you know, the, 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 the story of, of their birth, that can be a creation story, a creation story of when they got married, another creation story. Um, and it helps them to, to go back and, 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 uh, and maybe find a piece, or if there's something that needs to be resolved, to have uh, an, a, another audience other than family that they can they can discuss things with uh, if they choose. So creation stories are also a, a very wonderful way of uh, of, uh, of of making an offering. Um, the the there's there's two other things. What I want to to share with you, I think what I'm going to do now is uh, go into the experiential uh, because it's going to take a little time. It'll be about uh for about 10 minutes uh so let's do that uh let's uh get your crayons and uh just a uh, uh an a4 sheet of paper or a square piece of paper whatever you have it doesn't it's, it's not important that's not the important thing um it's uh, where we're going to go with that so uh let's give you uh 30 seconds to get your paper and your crayons or pencil crayons. Um, and this is not art. This is an actual, uh, this will help you to see the difference between uh, why art therapy is not art and that it's, we, it comes out in many different forms. So let's do that. Um, I'm just gonna get my paper and we'll begin. Okay, so I'm taking it that everybody is is uh, is is ready, and so you're gonna take your 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 piece of paper and just put it on the right hand side of your of your screen, and uh, we're going to uh, get your crayons get your crayons out of the box or just spread them on the on the table so they can be easy reach for you, and uh, and then we'll begin. 
So this is a, a little bit of grounding, uh, a little bit of breathing, and, uh, and then uh, doing our choice in, in art therapy. So let's begin by just taking a nice, relaxing pose. Just get yourself settled nicely, your, your feet on the floor, firmly on the floor, wiggling our feet a little bit, but also we're going to move. Movement is also a very big part of, of art therapy. It's moving things that are in our body. So just move a little bit, move yourself. Now take a nice deep breath, a nice deep breath that allows your, your little belly to just relax. Just feel that, just feel that belly. Just let that relax. Just let it be there in the way it wants to be. There's no critiquing. There's no judgment. There's just letting our body relax. A nice deep breath again. Hmm. So in this next while, I'll be going back and forth between taking some breaths. And each time I'm going to say a word to you. And what I'd like you to do when I say a word, I'd like you to two things, be aware of any feeling that's coming up in your body, but be aware also of what color you want for the word I'm gonna say. And on your paper, I'll ask you to just Write out the word that I say and choose the color. Okay. So let's start. We'll start with an easy one. So the word is love. What color is love for you? So you're going to print the word love and just make a little scribble beside it of your color. Another deep breath. The second word is lonesome. Lonesome. Can you feel it anywhere? Could be a tingle. Could be a little buzzing feeling. What color is lonesome? Just make a little scribble there beside the word lonesome. Deep breath. Let those shoulders hang. The third word is happy. Happy, what does that look like? What color is that? What color is happy? So write that word down. Maybe you felt something at the color, scribble that color again. Another breath. The word is fear. What does that feel like? What color? is fear. Deep 
deep breath. The fifth word is sad. The color is sad. We have two more words. Nice deep breath. Move a little bit. Your sixth word is anger. Anger. Can you feel that anywhere? And what color is that? I have one more word, but I'm going to hold it till the end. I want you to turn your paper over and take any color you want. And I want you to draw in one without stopping, like a gingerbread character. Start at the head, go around, an arm, down, a leg, don't move your pencil off the paper, up the arm and back to the head. Now, look at the color that you, that you used for love and color that space on your, on your little gingerbread human, little, little gingerbread figure. <laughs> Where does that color go on your, on your gingerbread? Just, it's just scribbling. We're not doing any fine work here. The next color is lonesome. Where does that lonesome go? It could go over the lines. It doesn't have to be contained in the body. Happy. Let's put the color happy in there. Your next color is fear. Where is that fear? Sad. And then the last one is anger. Where does anger go? Okay. So now we're going to do the last word. So sit back. <clears throat> Nice breath, just a nice relaxing breath. Let our little bellies hang out and just relax. Our shoulders just hang. And the word is protection. What color is protection? And here's what we like to do. You're gonna take your color and you're gonna hold it like this, like a little child. You're gonna hold your crayon or your pencil like that. And now you're going to make, start putting a circle around your gingerbread. We're gonna protect all that. We don't want anybody leaving in a, in a, in a difficult space. So let's just put some circles around. I'm going to go my, make mine go everywhere and just move that. Feel your back moving and put some good protection all around that, that figure that you drew. 
There, now let it calmly start calming down. It's very well protected. You can feel your hands starting to relax. And when you're done, you're done. Now, take a look at that picture. Hold it further away from you, way over there. And just look at that. Take a moment right now to just give gratitude. Give some gratitude to your beautiful body that is able to manage and be with all those emotions at any given time, any day, any hour. How amazing are you and your body that you're able to do that and still to be functioning as we are as mothers, caregivers, all of those things. So the reason that we wanted to do this is, was to possibly initiate a response from you. So looking at these words and, and having the possibility of feeling them, being aware that your of your body, your human physique, being aware of that, We're carrying a lot and we're doing a lot and it does need gratitude. So this is, and, and the, the last word, the protection, this is one way that we can express, we can do art therapy and find a way to contain whatever we've worked with. Other ways we, we can take a conversation and make it as small as possible and just put it away. But this is a way that we can do this when we're, when we're doing this particular exercise, this practice. Uh, and also going back to our discussion, it's we would know when, what words we can use. If you wanna use that and, and somebody's feeling a little down, little gray, it's a rainy day and he doesn't like rain, then find good words and start using those and help them to find where there's a bit of sunshine in their body. Or if they're ready to do some work and you know that they've discussed with you regrets, then it's all timed. You don't do something like that when you're gonna leave in half an hour. You do that when it's time to, to when you have the time to give it all the attention that it's going to need, and then that it's there's somebody else even after you leave from that space, and that somebody knows about it. These are these are all very important spaces. So uh, we're getting all ready. Right. To... Yes, we're we're just about at the end of the hour. I want to thank yep. everyone for participating. There was one question uh, that did come in from Michelle asking about or if you're paid to do the therapy in palliative care or how that functions in that sense. If you wanna answer that quickly um, and then we can uh, probably wrap up just cause we wanna be respectful of everyone's time, but. Uh, yes, uh, no, I'm a, I'm a student. Uh, practicum is, uh, is not paid. And uh, in art therapy, it's, uh, it's when you when you're when you get your uh, your uh, when you fall under the International Art Therapy Association organization, then yes, you're definitely you're definitely covered. And I just want to take a minute to to give gratitude to uh, to those that helped me to be here with you. And number, uh, I'll just quickly read this off. Of course, gratitude to the Canadian Hospice Palliative Care Association to Catriel and Dawn for, for guiding me through this. Um, and to all of you for the honorable work that you, that you are doing, the honorable care that you are doing. To Wheat Institute, 
uh, Darcy Adams uh, for the offer. Uh, and that's where I'm going to, to Huid Institute, but also to Fiery Jean Gravelin. She's our professor in, in indigenized art therapy. Um, and she's my mentor and she's a Métis elder that, uh, that does amazing work with us. Uh, so in my language, um, I hope we see, uh, see you again. Yes, so, uh, and one other question did come in earlier asking if there are any books on the topic as well uh, that people might be able to find out more there. Or yeah. are you aware of any or? Uh, just off the top of my head, I would say uh, to, to uh, Sean McNiff, uh, an amazing, amazing uh, um, uh, author, and he's on Audible right now. Uh, wonderful to listen to, and uh, it's difficult, more difficult to get his books, I believe, because they're. You might find them in a secondhand store because they're. He's he's from. He's almost like a, a grandfather of this work. Um, but Audible has some amazing books with him. Uh, also, um, everybody knows uh, Women Who Run With Wolves, uh, Clarissa Pinkola Estes. She has some amazing stuff on Audible. And uh, uh, Thomas Hobel, I'll have to say, he's doing amazing work, H-U-B-L. Uh, uh, but if, any, if anybody wants to uh, send me any other questions, you can do that uh, through email and I'll do my best to, uh, to get back. And uh, thank you very much again.